It's 1.58 Central Standard Time, developers. Do you know where your kids are? You guys remember that PSA from back in the day? How's it going? Last week, we started off with a 10 a.m. CST live stream. I was two minutes fashionably late, and we had to ban nine people. <laughs> because of, I don't know if those two are correlated, but there were definitely tomatoes being thrown at me through the chat at 10.02 a.m. So we're starting two minutes early, waiting for some folks to file in because we are talking about some big news, possibly the biggest news this year in web development education. What am I talking about? The Colt Steel Bootcamp sold over six, not over, but just about 600,000 copies on Udemy or courses on Udemy. Plus, who knows how many others in different venues, officially 600,000 Students are enrolled in this course. It's massive. And there has been a complete overhaul. I did a video on it the other day. We got a metric crap ton of comments. So today we're going to go over some of your thoughts, uh, your insights on this course, what you think about it so far, because many people in my audience are already enrolled in this course. They, I mean, this, this thing has been out for a few years now, and it just got its first major overhaul, like literally less than a week ago. So we're going to go over some of these comments. Again, I'm not going to go through every one because there's over 100 here. There are some really good ones, though, with some great insight. This is a course you just don't want to dive right into because of the time sink. It's not really a time sink, but because of the time investment. It's 60 hours, I think 500 or 600 plus lessons. It's a lot of material. And there is a really great, I'm not trying to jump it. I'm not trying to jump it here, but there's a comment here that the Bayless code made that I think is really important. Uh, so I definitely want to go over that one for sure. Uh, before that though, a few announcements. I want to give a shout out to my patrons, patreon.com forward slash real tough candy for making these videos possible. They pay for the upgrades of this channel. I am in the process of getting some more upgrades on this channel and that's because of them. We also have channel members. They also financially support this channel. So big shout out, big ups to my patrons and to the channel members. Joining both of those is easy breezy and you get some benefits with both of those. Also, this month's featured course on realtoughcandy.io, Freelance Newbie, Beginner's Guide to Finding Clients, Making Money and Building Your Web Development Empire as a Freelance Web Developer. This course has helped over a thousand freelance developers start their freelance career. It's practical. It's actionable. It was produced by a working freelancer. Uh, all this stuff is from my experiences in the industry designed to get you your clients as fast as possible uh, without cutting corners, really building sustainable business, whether you want to do it part time, full time to the point where you start an agency, all of it. Um, be sure to, if you're feeling a little dubious about it, you're like, eh, I don't know, check out the testimonials. We have some uh, shining examples of some prominent students as well as, well as some uh, other people who are newer to the game, who both parties, both of those extremes have been pretty pleased with this course and my other courses on here. So check that out. Uh, Paradoodly Do or one of my mods extraordinaire, please plug that link. That's what I have for shameless self-promotion right now. We are also going to go over um, some parts of this course because in the comment section here, I have a lot of questions. The most common question I got, if you don't have, so we're going to hang out for like an hour, maybe more depending on the vibe. Um, but the most common question I got in here is, do I have to pay to get this upgrade? So this is the Web Developer Bootcamp 2020. You don't have to pay for the upgrade. It's an automatic upgrade. So if you bought this course whenever, 2017, 2018, if you bought it two weeks ago, you get that automatic upgrade. This is all upgraded stuff. And then down here in section 59, legacy content, you can download this stuff and these resources. Um, there is also... 72,000 plus questions in this course. I think the teaching assistant, Ian, is probably a little overwhelmed with that number. Uh, so Cold Steel had an announcement here too regarding the legacy content. And we're going to check that out too. There's a lot to stuff to a lot of stuff to get to. So let's check the comments. Let's do a roll call in the live chat. I hope uh, there are some people here. I think there are. Uh, let's go over there. Woo! look at all these people what's up what's up matt mcpherson adrian from hello from argentina 
Average Joe, Sarah, what's up? Thanks for joining. Jason M, Matt, Alex, hi Alex, William Claybrook. William says, I signed up immediately and started the first 20 videos. Totally. Juan Lopez says, 30 hours if you play it on 2x speed. Good point. Robbo the Fossil, I love your handle. Hello, Azaz. Paradoodly is our other ma. Thanks, Paradoodly, for showing up today. Pratik, we have who else, who else, who else? Troy Mitchell, Phil, and many others. John, hi from France, he says. Vito, what's up? Callie, NYC, Alex. Hey, we have a we have a cross a country, cross continental influence today. Legendary eights, what's up? And anyone I missed, sorry about that. Troy Mitchell says, if you already know the basics, you can jump in a Yelp camp, which is only 20 hours or less, roughly. Yeah, and that's something else I wanted to talk about today, too, because the project has been... So there's like, uh, it says in here somewhere, there's like 13 smaller projects, and those have all been completely upgraded. Let's see. Where's... Oh, I just saw someone snubbing PHP. Oh, he did it. He, he, he did say this. He did say, I'm going to come back to this. Uh, I, that, wow. Okay. How many projects are in here? I think he said 14 small ones. Um, I don't know. Maybe someone can, uh, get that statistic for me. 13 plus projects. We built 13 plus projects, including a gigantic production application called Yelp Camp. Um, so Yelp Camp has been updated there too. I think there might be a, another feature that you build. Not sure, just because there's so much stuff here. I haven't had a chance to look over all this stuff. Um, but going up here, this is the course description. He says, everything I cover is up to date and relevant to today's developer industry. No PHP or other dated technologies. I'm going to hold withhold my comments on that and we will move it right along let's go to some of these comments this was the video review i posted the other day got some good comments here also sarah the dev mentioned this in our discord is anyone else besides us having problems playing the video automatically uh, maybe this is a bad one let me go like right here i thought it was because i was on safari for this uh, but I guess other people are having problems in the browser too. You see, I just, I click the videos, but they don't autoplay. And usually they do. And even, I, I don't even have the option to play it here. Like there's no manual play. You know what I'm saying? So you just have to like click it like this and then drag it back. It's really annoying. It's a first world problem, uh, but it is annoying. So let's go to these comments. We're also starting a, it's in progress on our Discord, a Cold Steel Bootcamp study group. First comment on here. If you want, join the Discord. We have over a thousand members. It's a really cool place. Again, we have basic people just starting, not basic people, but people with the basic skills and more advanced knowledge individuals. A great mix over on the RTC Discord. So please come join us if you'd like to um, sign up for that group. Faraday Academy. Check out Faraday Academy. There's so many side notes in this comment section. Faraday Academy has her own channel, Gwen. Great channel. She says, I've used Mongo at a few companies, and I don't think it's bad to learn it. It also transfers to using other NoSQL databases that are becoming more popular. For me, the most common database I see at clients is Postgres, so it's probably good to learn some SQL in addition to Mongo if you're taking this course. And then she drops a really good link. I checked this out the other day. Looks pretty solid. Uh, SQLbolt.com is a good place to practice. Free stuff. I haven't checked it out too much. I mean, I was probably there like five minutes. Uh, but from what I saw, a precursory glance looked pretty decent. So that's a, a good, insightful comment uh, with NoSQL databases, because in this, uh, so to give context to this comment, I had mentioned that this course, this boot camp, teaches Mongo, um, and I believe Mongo is one of the most overhyped technologies in modern web development education. If you're not interested in learning Mongo, uh, we do have alternatives, and this is what I wanted to pull up quick, too. Andre Negoy has a great freaking boot camp. 
Now, I know this, I know this, this title is about Cold Steel, but there are a lot of people who may say, you know what, this, this boot camp looks great. It's just not for me. You do have alternatives. So there are plenty of alternatives on Udemy. There are also alter alternatives on individual websites and web platforms. And if you want to support the creator more directly, uh, try going to their platform as opposed to Udemy, where they take a pretty significant chunk of the creator's money. So if we go to courses, he has the Complete Web Developer in 2021. This is a 37 hour course, 368 lessons. So just, you know, a little bit smaller than Cold Steel, but he does teach some different things. Node.js, okay, that's the same. He adds React and Redux. If you're looking for that integrated framework in one of these courses, you have it right here. He also teaches Postgres, which in my opinion is a much better option. Now, do your research. You don't have to listen to just me, but do your research. And I think some people can at least appreciate the fact that Postgres in a lot of circumstances has more real world applicability for the average new developer than something like Mongo. So just to share that, and Paradoodly Do, I actually, I'm an affiliate for ZTM because I love what they're doing. Paradoodly Do, drop that link to this course. Um, if you use my link, I get a few bucks if you buy something. So let's go back to the other comments. I freaking love this comment too. As you can see, I hearted it because I love it. I also think that people should use courses like this as reference materials, not expecting to complete the course, but to come to it when you need an update on something. That's a great perspective to have because this going from video one, section one, video one to section 58, <laughs> video 564 is going to take you months. And it can be really disheartening thinking, oh my gosh, I've been spending weeks on this. I'm still only on section three. I'll never get through this thing. You don't have to use these courses in a linear fashion. You can just use them like an encyclopedia. Like only the real uh, precious kids would go home and like lock themselves in their room and read a dictionary. You don't have to do that to get by in the real world. And this is kind of like a dictionary or a, a volume from an encyclopedia. You reference it when you need it. Getting started with this stuff, you know, the first five or six sections, great starting point, but you don't have to use this linearly. You can jump around. That's what's awesome about these videos and our modern, our modern courses. Whereas with a college course or a boot camp, it's like, okay, day seven, hour three, we're going to learn about Express now. It's like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. You, as a self-taught developer, this is one of our benefits, is that we control our entire education. We control that digestion. We control the pace of it. We control the curriculum. And so if you're tuned into yourself and you, you're you kind of getting a better grasp on things, start exploring these things. Even if you don't have a good grasp on what you're doing, it's great to explore and get some other perspectives. So I thought that was a really good comment. Good thing to keep in mind. Uh, Innocentric1 says, I was 50% through the original when all my progress got deleted and I ain't even mad. <laughs> That's... I love that comment too. So funny. But it yeah, if you own this course before... Like I said, it's an automatic upgrade. You don't have to pay anything. Whether you wanted it or not, you got it. And your progress, whether you were a 0% or 100%, was totally reset because these videos are all new. And so therefore, it's not marked as you finishing it. I want to take a quick diversion here and read the note uh, that he... So this Q&A, 73,000 uh, questions. And these questions are just flooding in. These are all from just a couple hours ago. So there's an autoresponder here. Hi there. If your question is about the new re newly released update to the course, please see the following note from Colt. Okay, so this is this is an interesting insight. I, I will, let me just go over this quick. He says, I wish there was another option, but I didn't have much of a choice if I wanted to provide you with the free update. This is from Colt. This is from the lips of Colt Steele. Udemy limits the number of lectures in a course, so I couldn't leave the old content up and publish the new content. I thought about making a separate course with the new content, but I wanted it to be free for all students. 
Udemy now has a limit of two hours on free courses, so that idea wouldn't work. So in the end, this was the only option to give all students the updated version for free. With that said, you do not need to restart the entire course. The new version covers the same topics in the same order. 90% of what you've already learned is still there. The new course just includes all the latest syntax and also some additional topics that were not in the original course. The only thing from the original course that is no longer in the new course is jQuery. Every other topic is still relevant and still covered. We talked about this the other day in this video, the migration guide, which is really funny. Like migration guide. No normally that's associated with like a database or something just massive. Well, I guess this course counts too. A, a migration guide for a freaking web development course. So funny. Uh, Lastly, if you're concerned about getting the certificate and don't want to rewatch all the videos, you can mark them as watched. Thanks for understanding. Sorry for causing confusion. Trust me, it's very frustrating on my end that Udemy makes it so difficult to give you new content. Burn! <laughs> this guy is their A-game star, and they still can't do him right with... Uh, giving some more flexibility with the new content. How many millions of dollars has this guy made the platform? <laughs> Trust me, it's very frustrating on my end that Udemy, Udemy makes it so difficult to give you new content. <sighs> you heard it from him. Let's go back to the comments. Bulgarian Daniel says, I procrastinated doing this program for the longest time. Just when I was getting ready to commit, boom, I saw the update. Time to get to work. That's it. Time to get to work. This is a great opportunity to get back into learning web development. If you felt demotivated in this course or any other course, maybe this course has been collecting dust in your Udemy collection. This is a great excuse to go back and see what is really going on in web development in 2020 going into 2021. Pawan says Jonah Schmetman is also updating his JavaScript course. The one says, wow, I wish this was released when I was starting out about six months back. That is the type that if you started six months back, this comes at the worst possible time for you. Like, I am very sorry because six months ago, there was no notion of like all these videos coming out, at least to my knowledge, sometime in October. Um, finishing this course like last month and then now seeing that, oh, it, it's all been updated. Because even going to like Colt's note, he says, yeah, the, uh, the only thing from the original course that's no longer here is the new, is jQuery. But there are a lot of new ways of doing things. Web development is changing like this. Um, and just it's, it's just good to have the most relevant, up-to-date stuff. And yeah, most people aren't going to go retake a 60-hour course. So anyone who started this thing like six months ago, I feel for you because uh, you are the demographic that I think got, got burned on, on this update. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think this update is, is fantastic. And as I mentioned in this video that I dropped the other day, I haven't been able to recommend this course for like two years because there were just a few things that were outdated and other products were doing them better. But now he's back in the ring and we got the, the competition's heating up and this is great to see. Uh, it, gives, it keeps people on their toes and it makes our industry better because people, this is a really well-produced course. There are some, some people were mentioning it in the Discord, in the RTC Discord, that some of the vocal levels were a little janky. I noticed that too, and I think probably he will have to record some of those or re-record some of those just because they are so drastically different. It is jarring. Now, mind you, it's 60 hours, so you're not going to have those perfect audio levels consistent to every vi in every video, um, but some of them are just kind of bad. Uh, let's see. Dimitri says, I was 60% through the first part, started over again. Here's someone who used Colt Steel, Angela Yu, and Jonas, and he says, this person says, if you're on the fence about Colt's content, trust that it's not a fluke. Why he is a very popular teacher, getting updated is a pretty big deal. 
Michael says, I finished the first version in 2018. I was a little disappointed at that time that the Yelp camp project kind of just fizzled out, left undone until Colt had someone else finish it for him. I've gone through most of free code camp, done several courses on code, Acad- code academy, went through the JavaScript section on the Odin project, as well as watched other courses on Udemy, but I still don't feel job ready. Watching Udemy courses in one th- is one thing, and things seem to make sense as I go through them, but once I started on a personal project, I tend to get confused and struggle on making things how I'd want. I kind of feel like it's being taught the alphabet, and the teacher goes, okay, class, we just learned letters A through Z. Now your homework for the next week is to write the great American novel, the next great American novel. Getting out of tutorial hell is a journey of its own. Brilliant comment, so spot on. And I, I, I relate to this too, um especially as a code newbie, you you go into these courses not knowing much about development, right? Like not having programming fundamentals. And I think that is what tripped me up the most was that I was learning implementations rather than programming foundations. It's like you have to have knowledge of the t- these topics before you actually take the course. Then it actually makes sense. But once you you go into the course and you start learning about these things, it's just like you try to do it on your own. You're like, where do I even start? So I, I totally relate with that comment. That comment resonates with me as as a when I was coming up into the industry and, and learning these things like nine tutorials out of 10. It felt like you had to know the topic before they actually taught it to you. And then to actually use it on your own. It's like, I, I don't know where to start. So next spring, I'm coming out with the course called Solving Problems in JavaScript. I had to press my noggin for a minute to address some of those issues that so many code newbies have. And it's so you can start solving problems on your own rather than just solving implementations, if that makes sense. What I mean by implementations is that Yelp camp. You can, you can follow along with the coding tutorial, no problem, right? That's an implementation. But when, you ha- when you're called to do it on your own and use your problem-solving skills, it's very hard. Um, and so that's one of the problems I'm trying to solve with realtoughcanny.io with the materials that I've produced. We have many other courses on there. Um, but one I, th- one I think in particular is going to help people is solving problems in JavaScript. And again, that's coming out um, next spring. Yeah, gaming sensei says I I was the J- I was in the jQuery section when he updated the course. Man, that's kind of a bummer. That's like the only section that's not there anymore. Two questions. Okay, this was a good question too. Not the VS Code theme. This <laughs> every VS Code video, every tutorial on YouTube. Sir, what what is your VS Code theme? Ma'am, what what is your VS if you're making videos on YouTube or you're using VS Code anywhere, just tell the people what your theme is, please. <laughs> there are so many. That's like the number one comment on any project, any tutorial involving uh, VS Code theme. Uh, but this is the more relevant question. Is CSS Grid included in this course? It's actually not. Just Flexbox and some CSS framework stuff. We have Bootstrap. Uh, he uses some UI library. I don't remember what... But uh, grid is not included in this course. All right. Bayless Code says, I think it's okay not having a framework since he has a React bootcamp. It's a bootcamp, so 60 hours makes sense. To me, 60 hours equates to 100 to 200 hours of study time. Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, the, the, video, the video runtime is not the study time. You're going to be pausing a lot throughout this course. Hey, what's up, Randy Miller? I don't know if you're in the chat yet, but thanks for your comments. <laughs> Adam J. I love this comment. I'm going to I'm gonna heart this comment. I don't really like any of them. I must be a jerk, but I just don't like them. The teaching isn't good. One thing you can say is that it's a good value for money. Most people won't get a job from this, though. That's just the reality. I appreciate that counterpoint. And you know what? The fact is, just because this course is the most popular web development boot camp online of all time, does not mean it's for everybody. Online education isn't for everybody. The video course format isn't for everybody. Now, thankfully, we have other things like Scrimba, which is really interactive. We have Educative.io, which is super interactive. Um, We have blog posts and books. We have other ways of learning. We have good old-fashioned in-person boot camps. We have good old-fashioned college courses. 
But I can I can appreciate and respect this comment because this person isn't being vitriolic. They just don't like them. And so, yeah, if I mean, you shouldn't you shouldn't um, question your own gut feeling about these things. If it's one thing, if you're not understanding the material because it's tough. But it's another thing if the video the video format just isn't doing it for you if listen you're spending hundreds of hours with this person his voice going like this through your headphones his his vocal tone vibrating through your ears for 60 hours plus that's a long time to spend with anyone like a long time um and it's not for everyone but this person is correct. One thing you can say is that it's a good value for the money. I mean, Udemy will always be the home of the $9.99 or $13.99 course. How many times when I was first learning was I scouring the internet for the nine, the fabled $9.99 coupon? Meanwhile, I just wasted an hour of my time. It's like, what are you thinking, RTC? Like, get it together. Is your time really worth that little? Just pay the 14 bucks. Like, it's crazy. Uh, let's go back to the comments. I wish I could buy it. Anime Amin says, I wish I could buy it. Is there any free alternatives? That's a good question too. Uh, Paradoodly do, our mod extraordinaire, swiping in to post this link, uh, 101 places to learn to code for free. Now, this was an article uh, we put together earlier this year. 101 places. Oh yeah, it's quantity, baby. We we focused on quality some of these, I mean, some of these may be more quality than others. I certainly think so. But I wanted to be expansive. I wanted to cater to everyone's tastes. Um, and you can, I'm, I'm just listing it. You can decide for yourself if there's one thing interesting here for you or more. Um, but yeah, Paradoodly, if you still have that link, I don't know if you've been um, popping in a lot of links in the chat. Don't fatigue the audience. Uh, but if anyone's interested in free alternatives to learning how to code, we have 101 at realtoughcandy.com forward slash this learn dash two dash code dash four dash free. <laughs> okay, so I got an incorrect comment here. This person I think was thinking of another course. Candy Cane 0602 React is included along with Redux. I don't think that's true. In fact, I no, it's not. Um, React. There are no frameworks in this course. React. Uh, no, certainly not. Uh, you may be thinking of this course, the Andre Nega course, Andre Negoi course, which uh, has React and Redux, but the Colt Steel does not. No, s <laughs> says search is currently not available on Udemy. Udemy has been having some really lame just petty problems lately. So I don't know. Oscar says, I got the course of Andre you reviewed time ago. Do you think it's, do you think it's worth it? Still get this one. Oscar, if you're, if you're deep into this one, I would say just stick with this one because one's enough. You know, you don't need to be mixing two boot camps. That's just going to be way too much material. If you wanted to take one um, and get, get everything, you know, to the point where you're able to build some projects, then yeah. You could take this one and emphasize or re-emphasize. What's, I don't even, uh, re, <laughs> re something. Reinforce, that's the word. You could reinforce what you've learned here and maybe add uh, some extra skills. But as far as like, because I tried that too and I know other people do like, well, I'll just take two and like combine them and see how it goes. It's just more material. It's just going to be material overload. The, these courses are more than enough. And if you're, even if you use Ian's advice or the Bayless Code's advice and just use it as a reference, it's two web courses as a, as a code newbie, I think is, is probably not the best idea. Um, just for, for time, time reasons and opportunity cost reasons. Let's see. Cornet says courses is just a waste of time and they keep creating courses and collect your money. First time I started to learn PHP 14 years ago, I just started directly by building projects. And every time I get a problem, I searched and solved on the internet or just thinking about a solution. Now PHP is just a piece of cake to me. Now I spend over... 
Uh, now I spend over the year at courses for Learn Express, React, etc., but I'm feeling zero. So I just decided to do the same as PHP and jump in and build projects and increase my knowledge through building process instead of watching courses. Programming depends on problem solving, not taking courses. This is an interesting comment. And again, going back to um, who was it? Adam's comment. Adam's doesn't really like any of them. This person says courses are just a waste of time. Just go start building stuff. Again, these courses are not for everyone. And you you might experiment with just reading documentation. It's tough, but it can be done. Some people have taught themselves how to code just by reading the Mozilla docs, just by reading the PHP docs, just by building silly little projects that exploded into something really big. And from there, the process just gets easier. Other people really love the video format. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I enjoy these counterpoints because it's not just about me saying, you must buy this course. You must do this. You must do that. No, there's like a million ways to skin a CD-ROM. Like, seriously, there are so many ways into this industry. It's not even funny. It's ridiculous. It's excessive. You don't, courses are but one way, and I appreciate this comment. Nando says, Candy, if you had the older one, were the upgrades free? Yes. Do you think this is the best web developer bootcamp on Udemy, or do you think Andre Nego's course is still the best? I think they're both really good. Uh, (laughs) When I read this thing about PHP, the PHP diss, Although I think, Andre, now I don't want to put words into people's mouths, but I seem to remember in a newsletter or some literature about how PHP was was also outdated or dead or whatever. Both, I, I think both of these guys are have zero interest, interest in PHP, which for me personally, I think is doing a big disservice to a lot of juniors because PHP has a lot of opportunities for juniors. Especially when you start talking about these smaller digital agencies, because a lot of them are using React in some way. Or not React, geez. (laughs) I got React on the mind. WordPress, Um, which is also a really stinky word for a lot of people like, ugh. Uh, But I'm thinking, I'm thinking of this from an opportunity standpoint. Also, PHP is great for freelancing uh, because a lot of people have older projects they need help with. the modern web, the vast majority of, of web apps, things on the internet are on PHP. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, the thing, PHP, I think, I think it's a incorrect, I, I think it's like a stereotype. PHP is outdated. It's, it's not. PHP 8 is dropping in like a month. But I digress. I hope he does the same thing to the advanced web dev bootcamp. I do too. I wouldn't count on it. The healer. Wait, do I need to buy the Udemy course again if I own it? No. And then finally, <laughs> this is this comment simply, succinctly stated. No worth. <laughs> I I left this comment. I, I I left it. I left the comment developers. Um, And then the person mentioned about getting the course from a torrent site, which is just about the most ignorant thing you can say on my channel, uh, which I mentioned right here. Uh, But, you know, I left I left the comment up. We all say things that aren't the best. You know, we all make mistakes. We all say things we wish we hadn't. Um, And the thread goes on for 30. (laughs) (coughs) As long as people aren't vulgar or, or engaging in personal attacks or doing something really ridiculous, I leave the comment and I have my mods leave the comment. Um, so I, I, I left most of this stuff. And then this person was talking about um, getting the person's email address to like send them courses from the torrent. Like, <laughs> I, I, I had to laugh like, Abhishek, come on, we talked about this. But we had some really good comments on here. Uh, Razuk says, or Rekis, sorry, I mispronounced your name. This was my first purchase course in Udemy, and Colt was a very fun instructor. We'll be visiting back this course to do the projects. For sure. Yeah, and there are 
We went through it a little bit on the video about the new projects or the lack of the old ones because there was the drum machine, there was a to-do app. This one has, let's see if we can get some some projects here to show you guys. Scorekeeper code along. That one sounds kind of boring. Um, there was a pricing page here somewhere, probably in the CSS section. Pricing panel project. This actually looks really neat. It's like a fun little project, nice and colorful, nice and beautiful. Uh, so this is an example of one of the projects you'll create earlier on in the course with HTML and CSS. The Museum of Candy project, I believe this was here last time. I believe this was, okay, so they're not completely replaced projects. They're just outdated because I do think this was here last time ton of javascript stuff now in the video i didn't spend I, I the whole entire video was eight minutes just because i knew number one so many people already own this course it, was, it would seem kind of silly just to go over the th stuff they already were familiar with and number two I, I could spend an hour going over this which is why i'm doing this live stream <laughs> i saved the long form stuff for this live stream so the javascript stuff starts way up here uh, JavaScript arrays, object literals, decision making, JavaScript strings, JavaScript basics. So an hour of the basics, that's pretty neat. 50 minutes for strings, etc. Hour and 20 for JavaScript decision making with conditionals. JavaScript arrays, that's an hour. Uh, JavaScript object literals, 29 minutes. Repeating stuff with loops. Hour and 34, some really good practice here, developers. Check this out. Look at all this stuff. The break keyword, writing a guessing game, coding exercise, to-dos, to-do list project code along. So there's a to-do list there. Okay, so some of these projects are, are the same, like I said. Introducing functions, 36 minutes. Leveling up, 59 minutes. Oh, snap, don't do this. Oh, don't worry, it won't play because it's broken. Callbacks and array methods, one hour. Newer JavaScript features, 42 minutes. I mean, do I really need to keep sounding this off? Scorekeeper code, code along. So this is with Bulma. Async JavaScript. Oh my gosh. And then down here, about halfway through is when things start getting fun because that's when you start with the Yelp Camp project. Right down here in section 38. This is the introduction to Yelp Camp. Uh, it looks like a lot of additional stuff you'll be working with too. There was, um, where was it? Express session in Flash. That's 36 minutes. Restructuring in Flash, that's 41 minutes. Serving static assets is one of the lessons. Less than 477. <laughs> Setting up Flash. Interesting. Section 49, authentication, hour 36. Yelp camp, adding in authentication, hour three, so on and so on and so on. And then uh, section 59, again, is that legacy content, the old course, which I don't know, is it just, it says one minute, so this is like a zip file or something. Okay, so this is, these are all zip files because as he noted in the Q&A, Udemy wouldn't let him do a free course and this was the only, this is one of the few ways he was able to do this without deleting the legacy content. So they're all all the old stuff, if you're interested, is available in these zip files. So that's kind of neat. That's actually a really good thing to have in case you were halfway through something. Even the jQuery thing, I know someone had mentioned here that they had been upgraded automatically when they were through jQuery. It's like, well, jQuery isn't on here anymore. But if you go to the legacy, it's, it's definitely somewhere in here. Here it is, intro to jQuery, advanced jQuery. Uh, and again, as I mentioned in the video review, I think jQuery is a great skill to have. Is it cutting edge? No, it's not. There are so many projects out there with jQuery, though. There's a good chance that you will be working with them in your career. So, you know, it's a it's a nice to have. So like so many other things, uh, not essential, but it, it is a really good skill. So if you're interested in that, that's also there to get to get introduced to that. It's a good section. I remember these two. Those were my first real introductions to jQuery. Um, I tried taking a Coursera web development course and it was just like a horrible failure. I, the production values were super slamming, um, but I didn't understand what they were saying. And again, going back to that thing of, you know, these courses, it's like they expect you to know it 
before you do it, before you take the course. And it's just like, well, I'm not going to get far with this. I don't know what you're saying. So this was the first time where I was able to really get what he was saying uh, and, and have fun with jQuery. And jQuery is really, really fun too. Unfortunately, not unfortunately, but as it goes, as, as technology works, we have discovered and developed better things uh, that have replaced jQuery's functions. So let's go to the comments here. I know I'm going to have a lot in the chat. Let's go to the live here. Sarah says, freelance newbie is great. I highly recommend it. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. Adrian says, I hope Andre Negoy re-records his web bootcamp course entirely and soon. Yeah, um, so that is one. This is what I really love about this Andre, or not Andre, geez. Um, this Colt Steel course is the freaking change log. This is a benefit. This is something I know I've been talking about with some students for a while when I was on Udemy. Uh, I was just thinking of different ways to show people what has been changed in the course. Because typically with Udemy, it used to say, all it said was this course last updated October, 2020. And you would have no idea what the update was. So it could be a full revamp. It could be, you know, someone forgot to put a semicolon on one of the notes. It has equal weight in the eyes of Udemy. Uh, so you really were in the dark with that. But now he has a freaking change log. And this is a, a free preview for anyone. So you actually don't even have to buy the course to see what these changes were or are as well as the migration guide. So I did show this in the video, but we'll go ahead and open this up again. These are all the changes. Okay, so I am right about the Museum of Candy thing. October 15th, 2020, geez, this was just yesterday, added the Museum of Candy project into the course. This project was added to the original course as a bonus section in 2019 due to its popular demand Due to its popular demanded, it's all it's now available again as section number 13. I wish was on, this was on GitHub because this would be a really good pull request for Hacktober for this little this typo. Anybody keeping anybody participating in Hacktoberfest this year, by the way? It's only October 16th, but it feels much later than that due to the Craptoberfest t-shirt driven development. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. But here's the change log, new sections, all of this stuff. Oh my gosh, look at all that goodies. Look at all those goodies. All that goodies. October 13th, added in a new lecture. October 14th, so this, I mean, this is, this is to the day. This is not bad. This is really cool, actually. And then the migration guide. Man, this thing is just, this is another whopper just keeps going on and on and on. So yeah, check those out. If you're, you're still like, okay, I don't know where I should pick up. I don't know how to, I don't know how to upgrade this thing or how to migrate. There's a migration guide. Definitely check those out. But going back to the last updated thing, I, I like this because it's very transparent and I think every course should have this. And in fact, it's probably going to be something I steal for my own courses just because it's it's easy for people to understand, it's accessible, and students, I think, deserve to know when things have been modified or last modified so they're not investing in something that's three and four years old. Um, when it needs to be updated. Now, some materials are timeless. For example, there's a course on here, JavaScript Understanding the Weird Parts. The course is from 2014, and it's had exactly zero updates. The course is six years old. Under normal circumstances, it'd be ancient history, but the course doesn't need updating. It is absolutely timeless. It's just a wonderful course. Uh, and it, it is completely, it's, it's future proof. It doesn't need an update. But stuff like this, especially when we're talking about implementations and certain technologies. Yeah, we, and early and in these early courses, like early lessons for newbies, We've talked about this a lot. One big frustrating thing is when you're getting everything, you're settling in to do a tutorial, settling in for a course. And one of the first things is getting your environment set up. Installing these packages in NPM or even installing NPM 
for the first time. You're getting familiar with the terminal for the first time and something breaks or something's outdated. It's like, man, this you're not getting a lot of positive feedback there. In fact, it's a lot of negative feedback and you get in this loop and it can be very discouraging. So when these things are up to date, there is a better chance that you'll have a more fluid experience and less, less pushback. And that's always a good thing as self-taught developers because we don't have someone by our side to guide us through. Let's, but so on that topic of keeping up to date, um, like I said, it would, I don't know when this course was last updated. Uh, there might be a change log here. I don't know, but I think it's a great idea um, that more instructors, definitely me. I mean, I, this is just a wonderful thing, wonderful feature uh, that's really going to help students and I'm probably going to start doing it myself. So thanks Colt. I forgive you for the PHP comment. Paradoodly with the super chat. Thanks, girl. She says, this rocks so far. I appreciate it, Paradoodly. Looks like we got some, holy crap, 127 viewers. Developers, you're killing me. Hit that like button. Come on. How's it going? It's TGIF. It's Friday here in the chilly Midwest. Guess what? This morning, I looked out the window and we had a snow flurry. It's already snowing here. The snow is arrived. I don't know where you are in this world. We got someone from Argentina. We, Adrian, what's the snow scene like in Argentina? Do you get a lot of snow down there? Right now, we shouldn't be having snow where I am, but we did. And it was nice, but I'm cold and I don't like cold. And I'm just complaining on a live stream. <laughs> so let's get back to the topic. Let's see. Sarah says, for the newbies asking, what is the best way to learn? Start with HTML and CSS and JavaScript. This will take you a bit to learn. Don't rush it. Good point. You know what, Sarah? Let's talk about that. When I was a code newbie, and even now to this day, let's admit it, we want to do the fun stuff. What's not fun? Slogging through conditionals and JavaScript. Learning about the execution stack. Looking over sheets of strange CSS properties you may never use. Let's build some apps. Let's build some sites. Let's get dirty. Let's break stuff. And so what I found myself doing was jumping into stuff I shouldn't have. I had no business doing. Like React. I hardly knew JavaScript. Like JavaScript basics. I had taken the Tony Alisea course. So I had a, I had a little handle on some theoreticals. But as far as like being able to do stuff on my own and like understand even a little bit of what is going, no, I was just like Jackson Pollock throwing code onto a canvas, just, just hoping something would stick. And like, it was just a mess. I know it's super tempting to just want to go straight into the fun stuff, which in this day and age is usually something like Vue, Angular, or React. Try to resist the temptation. Of course, Exploring is, is one of the big benefits of being a self-taught developer. You know, explore this stuff, break some of this stuff, but don't try and fast forward yourself to the last mile when you just started this marathon because you're going to have to start over and you code yourself into a corner. Guilty. I've coded myself into a corner so many times. And like I said, it's still something that I, I am tempted with even to this day when I was, I mean... The other month, for example, Ian and I were talking about um, WebAssembly. And I, I shared the story in another live stream, but it, it's worth repeating. We were talking about WebAssembly and Rust and uh, building, <laughs> what was it? building building an app with a Rust back end and a Svelte front end. And my eyes got swirly. And I said, okay, drop everything. I'm going to go go start this repo. Like, let's get it going. No, 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 no. Like, <sighs> And I thought, what, what am I doing? Like, I, I don't have time for this. Like, I don't, I, I've never touched Rust. I, I've, I've heard of it. I've read a few paragraphs about it. I've read a few blog posts. Like, I don't have time for this. Um, so it's always, it's always that temptation. And it's really tempting, uh, no matter how far you are in your career. And it's something um, that I still, like I said, I'm always wanting to hop onto the newest platform that's shiny and, and fun or newest technology and I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily but you also have to remember that this is your career 
And the, you, your time does have a financial value. It also has something that's far more important. You can't get your time back. And so if you're trying to get into this industry, it's very important that you stay focused or you're going to be looking back seven years later and saying, why am I still without a job in the industry? Why am I still struggling with the basics? There's a good chance it's because when you were working on the fundamentals, you got tempted to something shiny and new and didn't have that foundation. If you have the foundation, everything is going to be good to go. Everything just starts snowballing. But without that foundation, it's your web development house will crumble. Sorry for the cheesy analogy. That's all I could think of. Uh, but as Sarah said, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, if you have that triangle of deliciousness, you're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. Let's see. Here's what I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I've been babbling for 40, actually almost 50 minutes. So I need to swig of this. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be back in a few seconds. Ah, much better. Is Chiquito in the chat today? He's another financial supporter of the channel. He's always buying me nice drinks, mostly kombuchas. Today he, he got me a cappuccino. I discovered this new bakery in town and it's like so effing good. Best, I, I promise you, I've had a lot of cap cappuccinos in my day, but today was an actual cappuccino. They put it in a big, like a, uh, it was like a eight ounce mug. It wasn't like a teeny tiny. It was like an eight ounce thick diner style Italian-ish mug the way it should be. And it was amazing. <laughs> that is all. All right, I'm going to check these comments. Sark says Chiquito is a legend. He sure is. He's, he is truly a VIP. Let's see. We had some more people file in. We have 117 people here. If you're just joining us today, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today's video is on the one, the only, the Web Developer Bootcamp 2020. We're reading some comments from people from this video. Uh, I mean, massive amount of comments here, over 100. We're also going over some of the changes in the actual boot camp, talking about some alternatives in case this isn't your cup of tea, and talking about ways of getting through the course, actually going through it, because it's one thing to click on the videos, it's another thing to actually take the course. So we're talking about all that stuff. Uh, this is the best-selling web developer boot camp online of all time, or online you know what I'm saying. This is the best selling, most popular online coding bootcamp of all time for web development. It has nearly 600,000 students on Udemy, which is an absolute freaking incredible metric. Like seriously, imagine selling 600,000 CDs out of the trunk of your car because that's essentially what Udemy is. I mean, geez, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive for one person. Uh, I know he has team members, but this is not just like, you know, web development LLC. Like this is a guy who put his name on this product. I, I, it seems like he's really in charge of almost everything here and he made an incredible product. So yeah, I get, I, I should have said this earlier, like congrats to Colt Steel for cranking this out and actually bringing this to life and bringing this product to people, bringing this course to people. So many people have found inspiration in it, have started their careers with the help of it and have found interest in web development through it. And not most people uh, aren't able, I mean, only a very small handful of people are able to produce something like this and put it on Udemy. Um, there are a lot of products, I keep saying products, but I mean, that's essentially what it is. There are a lot of courses on Udemy that are just not that good. And as someone who creates courses also, I know how tough it is. Like it's really tough. It's really tough just making a simple YouTube video that's 10 minutes that's edited. Um, so getting all this stuff, this is really a Herculean task. Um, and us coming here and watching these videos and doing the course, you know, it seems easy. And not, and not watching the videos and navigating through it is what I mean. That part is easy. But producing it and getting it to that point was not. And some little nugget of wisdom for you in engineering 
the easier something is, the harder it was to build. The less you think about it, the more brilliantly engineered it is. It's like a Louis Armstrong solo or something. Like, when he plays his trumpet, it sounds it sounds good, it sounds natural, but that's the mark of a master because it doesn't sound labored. It doesn't sound tough. It's like, wow, that's, that's so effortless. It's because the person in charge of it is a master. And this is, uh, Colt Steele is one of our, our luminaries. He's a, he's a just excellent instructor. Uh, yeah, so big ups. Congratulations. It's a really big feat. So I think here, let me, do I want to touch this again? I really had a not so fun moment and not all in this PHP thing. Plus it's, in, it's bold. So that means he, he's really saying, really hammering home the point PHP. He thinks PHP is, is dated, i.e. outdated. This is what, this, these are the other things he's saying about it. The previous two bootcamp programs that I taught cost me 14 and 21 K. This course is just as comprehensive, but with brand new content for a fraction of the price. We build 13 projects. We talked about that. Uh, the only, this is the only online course taught by professional bootcamp instructor. Bold statement. Interesting. 94% of my in-person bootcamp students go on to get full-time developer jobs. That's another thing uh, I need to talk about again with this course. And it's something I did mention in this video, but again, this video was eight minutes. So we'll talk about it really quick here too. If you take this course, it doesn't mean you are hereby and therefore going to be a junior developer, if that's your goal. No course will make you a junior developer. No course is going to get you a job. That comes from inside. That comes from somewhere deep inside you with that motivation and doing a lot of other things. So the stat here is that 94% of his in-person bootcamp students go on to get full-time jobs. Uh, yeah, that's because the boot camps cost 14 k and $21,000. So when you go to a boot camp, you're not necessarily paying for the curriculum. You're paying for the extra services. You're paying for the support. You're paying for the in-person real-time instruction so you can ask questions right there. You're paying for your mentorship. You're paying for the job placement program. You're paying for, I don't know, do you think they give books out at boot camps? Whatever else. But the biggest thing a boot camp do, can do for you is not the curriculum. Because as many boot camp grads will tell you, they didn't learn all that much at boot camp. Or they will say also, perhaps even more incriminating, I could have learned some, I could have learned more on Udemy. I could, or I did learn more with a $10 course. It's not the curriculum. It's the extra stuff where people connect you to the industry. This course has nothing to do with the web development industry as far as getting you a job. There's no job support. There's no mentorship. There's none of that stuff that's going to show you how to solve problems. And that is the common theme on this channel is that we get paid to solve problems. We do not get paid to build Yelp camps. Why? Because Yelp camp is a problem that has already been solved. In fact, it's a problem that's been solved over and over 600,000 times. What we're really getting paid for is solving companies' problems. And if you can do that, you got the job. But if you can't, it's back to square one, trying to do it. And that's okay. But it's important to know this because so many people, unfortunately, they go through these courses and they work their freaking butts off and they finish the course, they do six months and they're still not job ready. Why? Because these courses aren't about, they're not catering to your local job market. Um, you know, MongoDB in my area, in most areas, I, I won't, you know, I, I've beaten the MongoDB horse to death. We could, it could be any technology. And if that technology isn't being used in jobs, in, in industries where you're trying to get a job, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. And putting those projects in your portfolio is going to be irrelevant because your employer wants to see projects that mirror what they're doing. Like if you're applying to e-commerce companies, let's say, let's say your area has a ton of openings at these different companies that are doing e-commerce for sneakers. 
if you bring those employers a portfolio of a, a flower identification app and your competition brings a portfolio filled with rad killer applications catering to sneakers on e-commerce platforms, guess who's going to get called in for an interview? The person building sneaker apps. So it's just, it's so critical that you, you understand that these courses are just a stepping stone. These, and you know, what's really kind of like, oh my gosh, seriously, I'm going to have a migraine. These courses just cover the basics. I know. I need a Pepto. I need, I need something. I need a Valium. There, these are just the beginnings. These are just the basics. Once you start working and once you start, you know, working in the industry and stuff, it's like, wow, this stuff is really just the beginner stuff, which is just so overwhelming to think about. Uh, but as a foundation, it, this is a great stepping stone. So don't get me wrong, but I do have to emphasize this because a lot of people are, I, I get, guys, I get DMs and emails from people all the time about, about, I'm having this problem. I can't find a job. I don't know what's going on. And so I have to address it because I care about people getting into the industry. That's why I have this channel. Thankfully, again, we have, thankfully, we have instructors like Colt who are great for onboarding people into this industry, great for onboarding people into the technology, maybe not necessarily the industry, but onboarding people and introducing them to the topic of web development. And whether you choose the Web Developer Bootcamp, the Complete Web Developer in 2021, there are a few others on Udemy. There's the Results Oriented Bootcamp. There's did somebody say Jonah Schmidtman? Or he has a JavaScript bootcamp, right? I don't know. There are a few other. A Angela Yu has a really good one. That one mirrors Colt Steele's older version of this course. So I don't know if I can uh, heartily recommend that one. But like a few years ago, it was really good. I don't know if it still is. Angela, Angela, Angela Yu is an awesome instructor, by the way. Uh, and she does a lot of iOS mobile development courses on Udemy. She also has, see, I think, I mean, she teaches at a boot camp too over in England. So when, when this says the only online course taught by a professional boot camp instructor, I don't think that's true. Angela Yu is rocking it in the UK. And I think she, I think she founded a boot camp. I could be wrong. I need to get fact check with that, but I swore she was. Let's go to the comments. Sipo Charles. Hey, how's it going? Haven't heard from you for a while. Glad to see you in the chat. Best all-rounder for me is a catamind. No idea how those guys do it time and time again, but I'm yet to see anything they do lower than an 8 out of 10. Don Schnitt says, Angela's even has a react part. I love Angela's flutter course, says Hamed. Yeah. Adrian says, Pope Francis is Argentinian too. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, let's see. Um... We have a lot of comments here. Michael Hamilton says, with boot camps, you have the accountability versus Udemy. I feel like I'll never finish on my own. Yeah. And I mean, that's the difference. That's just really part of the package with the boot camps. Like, again, it's it's $14,000, not for access to like a PDF on React, but the, the extra stuff, the accountability, the study partner factor where you can get into groups, just... It's being in that real time environment where you can just, well, I shouldn't say that now because I'm pretty sure all these are going virtual. Maybe I, I'm wrong about some of them. Uh, but generally speaking, um, in those real life environments, it's easy to connect with people. And when you're faced with a fourteen or $20,000 bill and you took out a big loan, you're going to do everything you can to finish. Whereas something like this... People, let's face it, if we don't pay anything, we don't value it. Not nearly as much if we paid 20, if you paid $20,000 for this course, I guarantee you all of us would be <laughs> checking our lists off, making sure every video section, okay, yes, I need to make sure I watch this video. I definitely did. Unit goals check. Oh my gosh. Were there any bonus videos? Did I download the resources section in in video 114. Oh my gosh, I got to get my money's worth. 
But because it's 10, 15 bucks, it's just like, nah, yeah, well, I'll get to it when I can. So there's definitely, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not opposed to boot camps. I know there are some really terrible ones, but there are also some good ones. There are also some really good ones where people, let me back up a bit. I haven't graduated a coding boot camp. I have only talked to people in my network who said, you know what, this is a really good boot camp. I've talked to instructors, uh, some who I really respect, others who I think need to take a remedial Udemy course. It's really such a mixed bag in the States, uh, but I, I don't have I don't have a problem with boot camps. Uh, I don't think fourteen or twenty thousand dollars, if it gets you a six figure job, is twenty thousand dollars that much? No, especially with an income share agreement. People, listen, if you're making twenty five thousand dollars a year, and someone said, okay, here's the deal, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna get you out of poverty, but I need your help. Number one, I need you to promise me. You'll either take out a loan. If you can't get a loan, we can do an income share where you will owe us twenty to $30,000. In exchange, we are going to do everything we can in our power to help you land a six-figure job. If you're not making six, six, six figures your first year, you're probably going to be making them the second year. If someone said they could 5X your income in two years for $20,000, you'd be, I mean, <laughs> come on, come on, do the math. But I mean, I'm not so naive to think everyone can afford $20,000. $20, it's a lot of money. But a boot camp is an accelerated way of getting into the industry. And I think the trade-off is pretty good. If you can finish the curriculum, um, and if you get to a good boot camp, that's the biggest problem because most of them suck. Let's go to the comments. Hamid says, I recently found a great course for Flex and Sass. Uh-oh. They're talking about soccer in the comments. G. McD says, there isn't a one-size-fits-all course. I've used multiple platforms. Some I've ditched, others I use in conjunction, which which with <laughs> some I use in conjunction with each other. You just got to do some research. GC the coder says, I wonder how many professional instructors have teaching degrees. I would think not very many. I would think not very many. And the reason I say that is because a lot of us are teaching because we found something that we didn't like about traditional teaching methods or brick and mortar schools. I don't know a lot of teachers with teaching degrees who came from a typical school, like a, I don't know, grade school, high school, whatever, and said, you know what, now I'm doing my own thing independently, doing web development courses. I, I'm sure they're out there, but I just don't see them. I just don't see a lot of people with that credential. And um, I think there are a lot of reasons for that. But I mean, people dump on the teaching profession, but it's not that bad of a gig. Like summer's off, Benny's, you got to really screw up to get fired. <laughs> like There's a lot to love about it. Uh, but that's like, that's an interesting, I, I would be interested in knowing. So let's see. Anonymous says, if you use what you learn with this to make a good portfolio with big projects, you might be able to land a junior level job. Yeah, the key is to, excuse me, the key is to make these projects your own. Um, and as soon as you're able to upgrade, switch out, switch out those projects to something better. Uh, I'm writing my fifth book right now. It's coming out next month. It's called Portfolio Surgery inspired by people who are having a hard time getting in, uh, just working their way through these projects to make them their own. So I'll show you five different ways of customizing projects to completely transform your portfolio. And funnily enough, one of the projects is inspired by this course. It's a photo gallery from the first version of this course. And we completely just like we totally bastardize it. It's is completely destroyed and remodeled based on these methods. And again, that's called portfolio surgery. It's also a course on realtoughcandy.io. If you're looking to revamp your portfolio and increase your callbacks and interviews. So going back to these comments here. 
Bulgarian Daniel. Let's see, Abir Tarsha. I wanted to go over this one. In this article from 2019, MongoDB is rated at 26% popularity. Above that is SQL. Is all is all SQL. I have wanted to do Postgres. I always say post post SQL PostgreSQL because I heard that it was a stronger platform than my my SQL. Also, I cannot bear the name my SQL. <laughs> Anything named my, my brap, sounds like a student project. That's really funny. And it does. I like it does sound a little teenage, like my sequel, like my first sequel. But uh, there was a question down here about that, too, because I did. Let's see. This person said, anyway, would Postgres been have would. Jeez, I cannot talk. Anyway, would PostgreSQL have been a good choice for Colt Steel to have inserted in this course? Yes. And can someone recommend a SQL course that is not too long and is inexpensive? Yes. My C- I know you just said you hated MySQL, but Colt Steel has a really good MySQL course. There is another question down here about the database thing. Let's see. Tom said, you mentioned that you, you're more likely going to use other databases than MongoDB. Can you say which databases you think are more likely to be in real world projects that clients are using? And absolutely, I said MySQL, Oracle, and Postgres. And Oracle is really popular, especially in enterprise. You're never going to hear about it. Probably not even on this channel. Maybe a little name drop. Give Oracle a little love here and there. But Oracle is, I mean, <laughs> let's put it this way. If Cold Steel is saying no PHP or other data technologies, you're not going to see an Oracle database course from Cold Steel. Even though it powers a lot of web apps and even non-web apps. We have other, this is what I love about web development too. There's a lot, there is a lot to love. But there is a whole other scene of applications offline. Like a lot. Web development fundamentals. And that's why it's so important to learn just basic programming. Because once you have that foundation, you can move on to other things. When I was my first enterprise job, I was doing offline applications. I was doing desktop stuff, um, business to business type platform stuff, uh, non-internet, non-web. And it was really eye-opening because I didn't realize just how much of what we do on a daily basis involves software. So if you kind of just step back and expand your mind and realize, you know, yeah, I know JavaScript, I know HTML and CSS, the, the underlying process, your problem solving process that you use in conjunction with those technologies can be applied to other places in software. What do I mean by that? I mean, maybe like IOT, um, enterprise stuff, non-internet, non-web enterprise, freelancing, desktop, m- mobile, mobile development. So many things. Microcontrollers. I mean, like, seriously, everything. Look around. Everything is powered by software. And that's why, that's why I just, ugh, I get so hyped. I get so excited because there are just unlimited opportunities And in a world where it seems like we have less and less, this is one of the few where it's just, it continues to mushroom. And we need to get people in this freaking industry. We need to get people in it. End of story. So that's just, uh, I just love thinking about it. I love talking about it. The opportunities are just, they continue to explode. The one says PHP is still relevant. I know. (laughs) Digital Shaolin says the same thing. Listen, I I know. I when I saw this little announcement here, I I have to admit I did have some choice language. However, all things considered, I'm not here to dump on this course, but I am here to correct the record that this is not accurate. Let's see. Charlie Spine. Hi, how's it going? Uh, Swift. Alex says Swift. Yeah, I mean, Sipo Charles says, I took the big JavaScript course, Vue.js, Algorithms, ES6, and Python. I love them all. Alex says, how can PHP be outdated if WordPress uses it? This is the thing, Alex. There is a huge consortium 
Is that redundant? I don't know. But there is a huge collection of people in this industry who snub their nose at WordPress. They're elitist. Um, they don't know what they're talking about when they say it's outdated. Um, and they it it it's like a it's a low key attempt at gatekeeping. Because what that says to me, if especially if an instructor says WordPress is outdated, PHP is outdated, don't bother, that to me is a, a like I said, low key gatekeeping because those jobs are so newbie accessible. WordPress is a great starter platform, great great collection of starter technologies. PHP, MySQL, the LAMP stack, the LAMP stack is a great starter st starter stack. It's a great career stack too. We have people here who have been coding for decades who are still use the LAMP stack. Uh, one person I interviewed a few months ago, one of my biggest supporters on this channel, Donovan, started with the LAMP stack. He, I think he did LAMP stack stuff for a few years and he might still be doing it. It's a great stack. Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. That's a stack you never hear in any of these courses, but it is something that there's a big need for it, especially, again, with these smaller shops these ma pa digital agencies, even the bigger digital agencies, most small businesses, at least in the States, uh, benefit. Their needs and their problems can be solved with a WordPress application. Sometimes they need other stuff done. But for the typical small business, WordPress solves their problems. And so that's why... Um, and, and I'm not here to pick on Colt Steel because I think this course is fantastic. Uh, but you have to be skeptical when you're reading some of this stuff, like, and, and don't let it close the door on a certain technology. Even here, like, yes, okay, I poo-poo MongoDB doesn't mean you shouldn't learn it, right? Like, if you if you have a dying need to learn it, go learn it and go research MongoDB. Go ask your mentor. Go ask people in your Discord group. What what do you think the status of MongoDB is or how relevant? Here's my situation. How relevant is this to me? And get some get some advice. People love giving advice. It's one of the, the great features about being in a career for more than a year. <laughs> People want to share. So don't be bashful when asking. This is your career. This is your career. So don't don't be bashful when it comes to asking questions and getting some clarification on that. Let's see. Afsar says, poor heck panda. <laughs> Just going through the comments here. Troy says PHP should redo its syntax, though. It could be much better. 100% agree. 100% agree. Pratik says all government agencies in India use PHP. Yeah, Pratik, I mean, it it's ubiquitous. It's, it's a ubiquitous language uh, all around the world. Like, from government to small business to personal projects to the, er the early web, Facebook, PHP. But, of course, that isn't sexy. So we talk about React all the time. Paul says React and Scala is off the wall. Jobs can't be filled by companies. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, 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 was saw I wasn't I was sighing. That was me just um, pondering other comments, Paul. Your comment is, is spot on. Weblo or Weblio says PHP is big in, Fran in French and in Germany. And in Germany, PHP is the leading language in e-commerce. Regularly, is PHP and e-commerce big? For example, Magento or Shopware use PHP. Yeah, all that stuff. All Magento, Shopware. There's a government... Is it Magento? There's another one. I don't remember. But all those older e-commerce. Open cart. I built a couple years ago. I built an open cart site. It was actually really fun. It uses the Twig templating language. And it was my first introduction to that. So PHP does have a lot of uses, but as Troy said, the, the syntax is absolutely atrocious. Um, I'm still looking for a perfect web language. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, it keeps me up at night. Anyways, developers, that's all I got for today. We have, again, the biggest news in web development education 2020 going into 2021. The Web Developer Bootcamp, if you missed the last hour of the show, it's all new. It's a free upgrade if you already bought the course. And if you haven't invested in it yet, maybe something you want to look at. But again, we do have some great competitor products. I keep saying products. You know what I mean, courses. It's a whopper. 
If you want to get a, a quick look at a behind the scenes, behind the scenes of the course, check out this video I, I did the other day. Other than that, if you are looking for a study group, I just opened up a new channel in the RTC Discord. They are organizing a team. I don't know if they're organizing a team now. It sounds like bobsledding or something. Uh, they're organizing something. I haven't caught up with that feed, uh, but I created a channel for it. If you're interested in finding other people taking this course, it could be a really great opportunity to, to take it to that extra level and give it that extra bit of seriousness. Um, I know I said... If we spent $20,000 on this course, we take it serious. But sometimes all you need is just a little peer pushing and someone to say, you know what? Hey, you got this. So if that's something you're experimenting with, no pressure, but the invite's open. Thanks to our mods, we have, let's see, who all showed up as a mod? Paradoodly, thank you so much for modding. Great modding today, Sarah. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate the shout out to Freelance Newbie. And uh, is Michael here? If you are Michael, sorry if I missed you. I haven't seen you in the chat, but my mods keep it, keep things civilized. They keep things great. So thank you both. Shout out Randy Miller said JS weird parts. Yep. JavaScript weird parts changed my life. Open my eyes. That's the Udemy course by, uh, um, oh, why does my mind do this to me? Anthony Alisea wonderful yeah i agree it, it changed it opened my eyes too and in a totally new way it really blew my mind um and it's a course that never needs updating it's six plus years old and it's it's relevant as ever uh anything else the featured course again if you missed it i it's off the screen realtoughcanny.io freelance newbie get started with your freelance career it's also a book on amazon portfolio surgery is also a course on realtoughcanny.io. It's my next book dropping next month. So keep an eye out for that. So excited. Developers, thank you. Please hit a button. Let the algorithm know that you care. As always, I'm RTC. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.